Imagine you have the opportunity to go to a dark side. You're in the US in the middle of the desert. It's warm, very dry, and the stars are sparkling from the sky. You're excited, you shoot the whole night, and then you come back, you stack your pictures, and they look worse than the picture you shot at home. This is exactly what happened to a patron of mine. And together, we uncovered what really happened this night. And today I would like to share the lesson learned with you right after the trailer. Hey, this is View Into Space. I'm Sascha from Switzerland. So grüezi miteinander and thanks for watching my channel. So what I will show you right now is not a story based on some real events but it's really happened exactly like that, just last week. And I immediately felt that I have to share that with you. Because based on what we uncovered, there is more than one lesson learned which might actually save one or the other shooting session for you. So let's go right on my computer and I will show you there right on the real pictures, how the story unfolded, what the root cause was, and how huge of an effect it really had. Okay, welcome in Pix Insight, and our story starts here with this picture. This is the stacked picture that I had to review. And so at the first moment I was like, oh beautiful, all these galaxies, so many around, it's really amazing. I never shot the Macarian's chain until now, so I was quite amazed. But then there were two things which kind of caught my eyes. And the first was this massive gradient. Given that it was almost a moonless night and it was at a dark side, why would I actually be it here so bright and in here just, just about at this time, just drop dark? That just didn't make any sense at all. And the second thing that I saw was that there was like a halo around these galaxies. They were shining way too bright, way, way too far out. So the first suspicion that I had was dew. But my client could assure me that it was very dry at this day. So there was no possibility for dew. So with that, I was doing blink. And before I press play, remember again that this was somewhere out in the desert. At a clear night, very dry at the bottom. So ideal conditions, and let's look at it now. And do you see how the humidity actually moves through the picture? And especially until about here, now it stops. And so now it's about even Steven. Now it was the meridian flip, second uh, part of the night. It was good, it was fine. But we had in the first about two hours, we had all this humidity. Let's look at it again. And you see really how it um, fluctuates through the picture. And now it about it stops. This is not massive. If you just go to a single exposure, this is not massive. It's just a little bit of humidity going through it, make it just a little bit brighter. If you would look at this picture itself, it actually looks okay -ish. Right? And that actually is why in Blink you have this 0.05 second interval between the picture because only when you really start scrolling through it or you look at it with these intervals, then you see these things. You see the developments through the night. And it could, as a single picture, it could have been easily misunderstood at well, this is just the start of the night, there's still a little bit dawn. Um, that's why it is brighter. So absolutely crucial to analyze your picture in Blink. So already now the lesson learned can be first of all, always, even if you believe it was absolutely clear sky, always blink your pictures. Get an impression about what happened through the night and ensure that you identify pictures that are not really clear. And second, and that belongs to it, in Blink, 
do not look at pictures isolated. So don't go from one to the other to the other, but really actually let it play through at a short interval. And then you start actually seeing these developments, how probably clouds are coming or going, or this humidity is forming. That's absolutely crucial. So what to do in a situation like this? Now you have two different routes how you can go. And the one is you go through the exposures one by one and you identify which ones are bad and you delete them. So the advantage of that is that you really lose only the, the exposures or the subs, which are really, really bad and nothing else. The con of it is, first of all, that it takes quite a while to do that. And the second issue is that you might be misled because sometimes, especially when we look at various nights, various sessions, you might actually get used to some bad conditions in one session and believe, well, this is good, but it's actually the whole uh, night was much, much worse than the other nights. So, so that comparison sometimes is missing, especially when you look at the nights um, separately. So the second possibility which you have, and I don't know if this exists in WBPP, I have to be honest, but I want to show it to you here in AstroPixel Processor. In Integrate, you have here the possibility to tell AstroPixel Processor to only stack a certain percentage of the picture. So for example, I can say only stack 70% of the lights. So now when I enter, for example, lights to stack 70%, it would show me here the number, then I can either leave it on automatic and it just takes out of a lot of different evaluation criteria the best exposures. But let's say, for example, I shoot with a very high focal length and I know the, gu the guiding is varying and sometimes I really have some egg-shaped stars because of that. I can go here to manual average and now with weights, I can say star shape. And with that, it only takes the 70% of the exposures that have the most roundest stars. And all my eggy stars are kicked out. So you have a lot of flexibility here. That's one of the reason why I actually stack with app and not with WBPP, because I get always the question again and again, why do I stack with app? One of the reasons, not the only. But with that, let's go back to PixInsight. So what I did, I wanted to be sure that I got rid of all these suboptimal pictures and I put in app the stacking parameter on 50%. Only stack me the 50% best pictures, which also means that I cut the integration time in half. So which picture would now turn out better? The one with 100% of the exposure time, but some crappy pictures included, or only the 50% best one, but with obviously with only 50% of the integration time. So here we have them right from the stacking software. Here we have again, the one I showed you before, and here we have my version, only 50%. Let's now toggle that. And, and as deceiving as it is, perhaps on a first glimpse, this even looks better because it is brighter, the galaxies stick much more out. But let's zoom a little bit in and let's toggle now. And I think it is very obvious how, for example, here and here, most of the details are actually gone. Also here, this massive, massive halo around this galaxy here, where it is actually here, it's still, I mean, Probably it was throughout the whole night a little bit humid, but at least it's way better than here. Also, if you look at the stars, they get much bigger than here. And I think that's another lesson learned we can already take here. Always prioritize quality over integration time. That sometimes hurt because you know that you shot a few hours and now you have to delete it, but it's way, way better. So now I did gradient correction, then I did SPCC, I did blur exterminator, still not stacked here. Let's look now at the difference. First of all, before the color of 
the picture stacked with up was kind of too bluish, but now after SPCC, that looks really nice. Actually, this looks now even a little bit too yellowish. And we, here we have actually nice colors in there. And we see that even much better again if we zoom in. The difference between these two pictures is massive. And by the way, look at the noise. Even this is half the integration time, so it should be much more noisy than the other. But the clouds had such a detrimental impact on the noise. I mean, these are things which theoretically we know. But when you see it in such a direct comparison, it is just staggering to see the effect that this little bit of humidity in the air had. And I just, this is also why I wanted to share this with you. By the way, just as a little sidebar. If you like my videos, but you feel you would need some one-on-ones with me, be it for some specific questions or topics you want to um, learn about PixInsight, be it about your equipment, I offer that. And you find actually that on my Patreon site and you can book slots. So just that you know. But let's go on here. So the last step was actually to stack it and I did not even process it further. I just stacked it. And so these are the two final pictures. This is the original one and this is with the 50%. Already now we see the big difference also from a colorization. It's just amazing how much nuanced colors we have here against that, which is just kind of black and yellow. And obviously it's like day and night. <laughs> Even here, the, the noise is still, I, I intentionally did not use noise exterminator here, but it's just massive, the difference um, between the noise here and here, just, just like everything. So I think I made my point very, very clear. And it's for me a great lesson. I will even more now look from now with Blink for any suspicious humidity in the air. And hopefully it is also for you a great lesson learned. Which also means, by the way, sometimes we have the feeling, oh, it's a little bit humidity in the air, but let's still set up the rig and shoot. And what we actually see here that most likely it's a waste of time and you rather really wait until you have a completely clear sky. I hope this was interesting. I hope it will really help you in the future. And I hope I will see you in my next video again. Until then, clear skies.